Hi, I'm Pastor Dave, teaching evangelist with Lamb and Lion Ministries. You know, for anyone who is a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the future promise of eternal life is what gives us hope. When the time comes to enter heaven, we all have loved ones and friends that we are so looking forward to seeing again. And if we really think about it, I'm confident there are some historical figures that we are also looking forward to meeting. It's almost hard to even imagine the day when we will get to meet Abraham and Moses and King David. I'm looking forward to King David introducing me to Grandma Ruth. You know, another biblical character I'm looking forward to meeting is the prophet Zechariah. You may ask why? Well, because he brought a message of hope on a day when it was hard to have hope. His biblical message from 2,500 years ago still rings true today. Like in the days of Zechariah, we also live in a day when it can be hard to find hope. As we go about our daily lives, we have the, the looming concern of the coming digital ID, the central banks transitioning to digital currency, AI and quantum computing, the C40 cities, and the impact of ESG. Each of these will attack our privacy and freedom and when we completely understand the effects these life-altering changes will have, we will be in great need for some hope. See, God used Zechariah to minister to the returning remnant of Jews from Babylonian captivity. The minor prophet book of Zechariah covers just a period of four years, from 520 BC to 516. But the Jews, they had been back in the Holy Land for almost 20 years. And they were commissioned to just rebuild the temple. But there was a constant struggle with outside hindrance, opposition from the Samaritans. You know, that caused the work of the rebuilding of the temple to just completely stop. The workers lost focus and became concerned with other matters. A scene very similar to today, as multiple, multiple surveys charting church attendance, church involvement, and individual spiritual growth have revealed people like the returning remnant of 2,500 years ago have seen to become distracted and, and, and disinterested. See, born in Babylon, Zechariah returned to Jerusalem with his grandfather, according to Nehemiah chapter 12. The prophecies of Zechariah line up with Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelation. Interesting, both Daniel and Ezekiel were born in Israel but had to minister outside of the land, whereas Zechariah was born outside of the land and ministered and wrote in the land of Israel. See, see, all four of these biblical books present a future of days unlike a time the world has ever seen. Yet it feels as if people choose to be resistant, almost numb to the warning and direction these books so diligently reveal. Today is when the church needs to be leading the charge to understand the darkness that lies ahead. I believe anyone who has even a basic understanding of biblical prophecy can see the warning the warning signs scripture has presented. I believe we can anticipate a day coming pretty soon when the general population will be confused, shocked, maybe even angry at the constraints forced upon them. So for hope, I keep returning to Zechariah. When it comes to this minor prophet, one can find hope even in his name. See, Zechariah's name means Jehovah remembers. We need to remember that God has foretold of the events that could soon be taking place. We must remember that God is still in control no matter what. He has not forgotten his children. It is refreshing to have this understanding while experiencing a world that is heading towards chaos. Zechariah presents Jesus, the Messiah, as a king, as a cornerstone, as a slave sold for 30 pieces of silver, as the smitten shepherd, the branch, and the glorious Redeemer and Ruler. All descriptions which lead to a hopeful future. God is our rock, He is our Redeemer, He is the reason for hope. The rebuilding of the temple had begun 16 years before Zechariah's ministry. It was a time when God sent two post-exile prophets, Haggai and Zechariah, to refocus the nation. Haggai called on the nation to complete the temple rebuilding project, whereas Zechariah came alongside the nation and assured them that God cared for them and had not forgotten his promises. Zechariah delivered a message of hope. 
He said, tell the people, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Return to me, declares the Lord Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. The command to return to me is still, still valid today. As a teacher and speaker of biblical prophecy, each day I face headline after headline of apostasy, rebellion, rejection, arrogance, and the list goes on and on and on. It is so refreshing to spend time in God's Word and see a message of hope proclaimed to a people desperately in need of, of hearing it and hungry for spiritual and emotional encouragement. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15, God says he is very angry, very angry with the nations who are, who are at ease. For a while I was only a little angry, then they furthered the disaster. The Lord is very upset with the nations who had mistreated Israel. The term that they felt secure describes an attitude of arrogance. Amos 6, Isaiah 32. These nations had opposed and oppressed God's people. They didn't care. God was angry with the nations of the world because they were at ease while God's people were suffering. Again, this is a scenario that plays in headline after headline in today's world. The world continues to go against God, to go against His Word, to go against His people, and they seem to have no concern in doing so. So, where is the hope? It's in trusting Jesus. One can rejoice in hope, in patience, have patience in tribulations, and be constant in, in prayer, Romans 12. We have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus and an inheritance that's imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, 1 Peter 1. The days ahead may get worse before they get better, but for those who place their trust in the Lord Jesus, there are future days ahead of us filled with nothing but hope. 